attention? Do I have your 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 attention? Is you taking notes? Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Simply Food by TY. And today, honey, I'm about to teach y'all how to make some oxtail stew. So as you guys can see, I have some beautiful oxtails here. I have roughly about five to six pounds. They're pretty hefty. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to focus on getting these bad boys clean. This is a very, very important step. And it's also going to help um, start to tenderize them. Now, the way you choose to clean your oxtails is completely up to you. It's really a matter of preference or maybe, you know, how you grew up or maybe how you've seen someone else do it for me it's pretty simplistic i just use apple cider vinegar i don't use white vinegar i use apple cider vinegar and i use limes now the reason why i'm going to be using limes is because the acidity from the lime is going to help get all of that nasty grit off of the fat and it's also going to start to tenderize the meat as well now i'm going to repeat this process roughly about three times just until that water starts to run clear but as you can see the these oxtails are looking pretty good. The other thing you want to do is trim off as much of the fat as possible. You do not want super, super oily oxtails. Now, you want to leave a little bit of the fat on, but trust me, you if it's an excessive amount, get rid of it. It'll save you a headache later on. So let's prep our veggies. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm working on a red bell pepper here. I'm going to be using a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper. As always, like I say, you can use whatever you would like. By no means am I saying this is the most traditional way of making oxtail stew or even making oxtails, period. This is just kind of the way that I like to make oxtail stew. I do think there is a difference in making oxtails and oxtail stew. I know some of you might be like, I don't know what you mean. I probably will do another video at a later date on just regular old oxtails. But to me, oxtail stew is prepared completely differently. Um, so I'm going to mince down these um, red bell peppers here and I'm going to use the whole thing because like I said, I am making a lot of oxtails. So typically, you know, if I was only doing about half the amount of oxtails that I have, I would definitely only use half of the green bell pepper and half of the red bell pepper. But in this case, because this is a large amount, I'm going to go ahead and use the full thing. And I'm going to do the same thing here as well, and I'm going to mince them down. Now, I would suggest for you guys to go on ahead and do this by hand. I understand that everyone loves to use a food processor. I get it. But the problem is, is that if you go too far and you start pulverizing it too much, you're going to release way too much liquid out of it. And then you're just going to lose all of that delicious flavor. Yeah, you could pour it directly in it, but I just, I don't know. It's just something about food processors that just kind of bother me. So I just like to do it by hand. And honestly, guys, it really does not take that much more time. So for this, I'm going to be using half of a white onion. Now, y'all know I don't really mess with a lot of onions, so I only used about a half. And for the garlic here, I'm using about five to six large cloves. If you are a true, true garlic lover, by all means, feel free to add yourself in some more. That's completely fine. Um, so that's pretty much it as far as the vegetables that are going to go in this. Now, this next thing that we're going to talk about um, with the whole scotch bonnet peppers and all of that type of stuff if you are able to find scotch bonnet pepper, by all means, you can use it. I would want a thousand percent. Make sure that you deseed it. You do not want to leave the seeds in, or you might, you might hurt yourself. Okay. So I'm not going to be using an actual scotch bonnet pepper in this. I'm going to be using scotch bonnet pepper hot sauce, and I'll show you the brand and all of that in a few minutes. But I just wanted to let you know that now. If you were going to use the actual pepper, you would chop it up mix it in with everything that you see right here but just please make sure you deseed it or it's going to be way too hot now as i said my oxtails had been properly cleaned i trimmed off as much fat as i possibly could and right now i'm actually just taking the oxtails and i'm rubbing them down with the peppers i know this is a lot of steps that most of you guys probably will skip and that's fine um, I'm also going to be adding in one pack of sesson. Now, just so you guys know, uh, typically you can find this in the international area or sometimes they keep it by where the tacos are. That's, I don't know, some grocery stores have it all over the place. Now, for my seasoning, it's pretty straightforward. I love using Grace's Oxtail Caribbean Seasoning. Now, I'm going to be using roughly about 
almost four to five tablespoons. You really want to make sure these are nicely, nicely seasoned. The good thing is, is that you'll be able to taste this as you go along. But I would say, depending upon how many oxtails you have, that's how you'll gauge how much seasoning you're going to use. If you're only cooking five or six oxtails, clearly you will not use five or six tablespoons of the seasoning. You know what I mean? So just gauge that off of how much you're cooking. Most people are not gonna make a pot of oxtails as large as I am. So just adjust it accordingly should you need to. Um, but that's that's pretty much it as far as like the actual like seasoning seasonings. I'm gonna be adding in a 14.5 ounce can of stewed tomatoes here. Um, you know, sauce and all, and that's all gonna contribute to the sauce later on. Now, I prefer to only use grace. Now, I'm gonna be using a half a tablespoon of this browning. We're gonna be using a little bit more later on in the recipe. That's the reason why you only wanna use a half now. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna be using the Grace's Scotch Bonnet Hot Pepper Sauce. Now, to me, I love this. Now, because one, I know exactly how hot it is, and if I truly wanted to, you know, gauge what the spice will be. Uh, to me, it's you're better off using the actual hot sauce versus the pepper, because sometimes that pepper might catch up with you, and by then it's too late. The food's already too hot. So with the scotch bonnet pepper, you can taste it, see if it's too hot to your liking, and then you can add it in accordingly. Now, you want to make sure, you guys, that you let this marinate for, I did for two days. One day is completely fine. If you're in a pinch, five hours. No less than five hours, no more than two days. So once they're done marinating, this is these been marinating for two days, what you're gonna do is you're gonna remove them out of the peppers. You're gonna keep all of this goodness that you see right here. Do not throw any of that away. That's all gonna go in the stew in a few moments. Now I'm going to be putting mine in the oven. So I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven here. What we're doing right now is we're just focusing on browning off the oxtails. You are not, I repeat, you are not trying to fully cook them right now. First things first is make sure that you do not overcrowd the pan or they will never brown. They'll just start to steam and then you'll be doing this all day long. I have roughly about two to three tablespoons of oil in here. Um, you can always add in more oil if you need to, but remember you have a lot of fat on these oxtails. So that's also gonna render off a lot of oil as well. So you can kind of keep that in mind. Like I said, at this point in stage, we are not trying to fully cook these. We are just browning them off. You're going to brown them off on both sides, you guys, on both sides. Once you do that, you will take all of your oxtails and you're going to remove them and just sit them, you know, on a cutting board or something to the side while you're working on actually getting the stock itself together. OK, so you're going to do this in batches, depending upon how many oxos you're cooking. You'll do it, you know, three or four at a time. But as you can see, they brown off beautifully. I do not add flour on my oxtails. I think it's completely unnecessary because um, I like to gauge how thick the sauce is going to be. Um, and once again, this is a stew. So it's a little bit different than your standard oxtails. OK, so and then, like I said, we're just going to repeat the same process. Brown them off both sides. Then you're gonna put them all to the side. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start focusing on the actual stew aspect of this recipe. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna add in this entire can, you guys, the entire can. I'm gonna make sure that I type on the screen uh, what size can that was of this tomato paste because I know that moved kind of quickly. But you're gonna use the entire thing. I know that might seem like a lot, but once again, I'm making a very large pot of stew here. Um, and we're gonna be using a half a cup of sofrito, which is pretty much just a cooking base. It's a tomato base. It has a bunch of onions, garlic, cilantro, things along those lines. All of that brown stuff at the bottom of the pan, that is prime. You want that, that's all good stuff. I would definitely say be mindful, gauge this off of the type of pan that you have. If you know that you don't have a really good pan that I would definitely suggest, make sure you err on the temperature on the lower side versus the high. That way you don't burn anything, you know what I mean? So now we're gonna go on ahead and add in all of those beautiful veggies, all of that juice, all of it. That's all gonna create even more flavor. Now at this point, 
you want to make sure that you're really keeping an eye on the temperature because we're starting to add more liquid in. And as we add more liquid, all of that brown stuff on the bottom is going to start coming up with ease. So don't stress about that, especially if you have a good nonstick pan or a Dutch oven, it'll come up. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, but because you're, you are using tomatoes right now and tomato paste and, you know, so forth and so forth, you want to make sure you're keeping an eye on the temperature so that you do not burn anything. I've just added in a half a cup of a dry red wine. You can use whatever kind you would like. I think I used, I don't know, like a Cabernet Sauvignon or something, something that I had already had open. Um, it does not need to be some fancy wine. Do not use cooking wine. Get real wine. Of course, it's optional. You don't have to use it, but that's just something that, you know, I like to add. We're going to add in three cups of water. And that's it as far as the actual liquids. Um, you don't really need that much. Um, and you're just going to give this a good mix. So that's pretty much the base for your soup. We're going to add in a nice heaping tablespoon of beef bouillon, the better than beef bouillon. Um, if you can't find that, you can use chicken. Uh, you can use beef broth instead. Um, but, you know, that better than bouillon stuff, honey, that stuff be it be bomb. It, it has such a great flavor component to it. Um, okay, so now that we've gotten all of that stuff in there, the next thing we're going to get ready to do now at this point is we're going to start adding back in our, um, our oxtails. Um, and like I said earlier, I told you guys we were going to add a little bit more browning. That was roughly about a teaspoon that I just added in there. You don't really need to add too much of that stuff. You know, it goes a long way. So keep that in mind. So now we're going to start adding in all of the oxtails, like I said, and then we're also going to be adding in, um, potatoes. Now these are like little tiny baby, baby, uh, Yukon gold potatoes that I found in the grocery store. You can use whatever type of potatoes you want. You can cut them up yourself. You don't, you don't have to buy these. I mean, you're just going to give this a mix around. Now we are also going to be adding in carrots to this, but I will tell you guys when to add those a bit later on. You do not want to add those in right now. Make sure you guys have your oven preheated at 300 degrees because we are going to get ready to bake this off you guys in the oven at 300 degrees for three and a half hours. Okay. But before we do that, the next thing we want to do is we want to go on ahead and add in two bay leaves and a few springs of thyme leaves. Pop the top on it, put it in the oven for three and a half hours. At the three and a half hour mark, as you can see, they will already start to become very tender. Now, depending upon how good your knife skills are and how much fat you got off, you might have a lot of residual fat that has risen to the top of this. Trim all of that off. You don't want it sitting in the pan. Um, you know, oxtails do have a lot of fat, so there really is no real way of getting around it. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you trim that off. We've also just added in one pack of the Lipton's Beefy Onion uh, Mix as well, as you can see with our carrots. You can add as little or as many carrots as you would like. Um, but once again, it really is important to make sure you trim off as much of the fat as possible. As you can see, these oxtails are already looking absolutely fabulous you guys now what you're going to do is you're going to put the top oh also one thing i forgot to tell you i also added in four tablespoons of brown sugar that's optional but that's just what i like okay i added in four tablespoons of brown sugar after that you're going to put it back in the oven you guys for one for about one hour so about four and a half hours total at 300 degrees these babies turned out fabulous they were absolutely succulent falling apart taste it for salt you can always add some more of that oxtail seasoning or if you wanted a tinge sweeter add some more of that brown sugar i think they turned out absolutely fabulous and i hope you guys try out this recipe because honey this is it serve it with some red beans and rice or whatever you want look if you're new to my channel welcome to simply food by ty and if you're one of my returning subscribers well y'all babies know i love y'all so so much and as always y'all stay cute and take care. Bye, guys. Good God, look how tender it is. Slaying in the kitchen. Simply food by TY. We hope that you enjoyed it. Simply food by TY. If you haven't took the time, make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Simply food.